during the game, I think it's more crucial. So when you're stepping up for a penalty or a free kick, you've got to take control of that situation. Yes, people, welcome back to the channel for a brand new video where today I'm going to be talking about how to manage pressure on a football pitch. Should you let it go or should you embrace it and use it to your advantage? There's a lot to cover. So before I get into that, make sure if you do enjoy the video, give me a like, subscribe if you're new around here and click the notification bell so you don't miss an upload. It would be rude not to. But now that's out of the way, let's talk about managing pressure on a football pitch. Whichever way you look at it, pressure exists in sport. So when athletes say that they don't feel pressure, well, they're kind of lying because it's always there. Everyone feels it. But I think what makes the difference of the really elite athletes, the world-class performers, is they learn how to control it. And that's my first point in today's video, really. In order to perform effectively in high-pressure situations, such as taking a penalty or playing in a cup final, you have to learn to control it. Now, pressure and nerves can be good. Don't get me wrong, we've all got low levels of it all the time, and obviously that increases in pressure situations, but it's not a bad thing. I think if you perceive pressure to be a bad thing, then it will take over you and take a hold of your performance. But if you see it as a good thing and a reason to be on your game and perform to a high level because the stakes are high, then it can actually really help. A lot of pressure often stems from external factors outside of our control. Now in football, this is often the opposition. Now why waste pressure on worrying about someone else or feeling pressure from the way someone else might play? the defender you're up against, the attacker. Now, even if they are a good player and they're going to make your day difficult, see it as a challenge. You know, pressure can be relished. It doesn't need to be something to worry about or feel apprehensive about that will therefore affect your performance. You know, take it as a challenge and use it to your advantage. At the end of the day, performance is actually pretty simple when you break it down. So you've got to try and make it as simple as possible. Simplify those sources of pressure to just yourself, you know. Even what the rest of your team could do is kind of at your control. So you've got to think about what can I do in today's game? You know, if I'm at my best, what can I bring to the team? And if you, I'm not saying forget the other external kind of sources of pressure because they are there and you're going to think about them from time to time, but don't let them impact on your performance. Simplify the game, simplify the performance, the job at hand, and then you're going to set yourself up for everything to go as positive as it can. I think one way to do this is actually almost to have like a pre-performance routine, um, even almost like a mid-performance routine, really. You see it a lot in tennis, but in football, you could you could see it too. Now, if this might be the run-up you take for a penalty or free kick, a certain amount of steps, you know, the angle you stand at, little things like that, or it can be really trivial things like the order you put your boots on in the changing room before the game. Now, I know I used to always put my right shin pad sock and boot on before my left not all in one go but my right shin pad first then my left etc etc really weird little thing but if i didn't do that and i had a bad game i'm not i didn't use it as an excuse but it plays on your mind so to have them conscious kind of decision making processes where you're just kind of getting yourself in the zone you know and during the game i think it's more crucial so when you're stepping up for a penalty or a free kick You've got to take control of that situation. So if you put yourself in this state where, you know, you rehearse something and it's just a few breaths or a few steps or where you stand, I think it allows you to escape from the chaos of the game and just kind of puts you at ease and the pressure maybe melts away a little bit and then you're in the best possible position to perform the desired action. Now, this is almost an example of what's called a fluid state or a flow state in sport where some things rehearse so well that it's almost unconscious the way it kind of plays out and to do this little routine before or during performance puts you into that mind frame so that almost you're blocking everything else out it's just you and things are almost reactionary they just happen they are fluid you've got a flow to your performance and i think you see that in the real elite of the elite where in those situations, whether it be a penalty or whatever it may be, they just seem so at ease with what they're doing. They're almost not thinking about it. It just kind of happens because they practice and practice and practice, and therefore the pressure doesn't affect them in that situation. Moving on to my final point in today's video, which is bring pressure into training. 
Now that seems crazy. Why would you want to bring pressure on yourself? In training, it's not a game, but it's an old cliche in football. You know, you're supposed to train how you play and that really brings the best out of you every day and puts you in a good stead during the week. Now, what I mean by this is maybe you've got condition games anyway by the coaches and they'll implement different elements of pressure into training in order to better the performance of the team. But for yourself, why not limit the amount of touches you have if you're an attacker or a defender, you know? Give yourself many targets or time frames that you want to intercept the ball or win it back for your team. And those little things can just make game day that much easier. So when these situations occur in a match situation, you're ready, you're prepared because you've put yourself in that mind frame in training. Now, yes, it's not exactly the same. You're against your teammates in training. It's a little bit more lighthearted. But if you bring those elements into training, you're going to be prepared. That flow state, that fluid state might take over in a match because you've rehearsed it. You're ready for those scenarios which may take place. But that is going to be all for this video. A little bit of a shorter one today, but just thought I'd talk about the way pressure can manifest itself in games and what you can do as a player, as an aspiring professional, to maybe manage it and deal with it in a way where it doesn't take over and you can still be the best player you can. But I hope you did enjoy today's video. As always, let me know in the comments your thoughts about pressure and the way you feel that like impacts your game. And I will see you in the next one. Been crying so much to the